All right, so let's let's um uh, let's walk through how to set up uh, a repository to make use of the GitHub Actions pipelines template. Um, first thing to do is to pick a workflow that meets the needs of what you want to do. Um, let's say we need to scan a website, so we can go to the OWASP scan. Uh, every template follows the same format. Um, the templates have been designed to not have you worry about what's happening on the back end. Uh, these templates are for, used in a way where you're calling the remote workflow, which has all of the logic, and you're simply passing inputs. So you don't have to worry about uh, making any modifications other than the settings that have been deemed as the the necessary settings to have. Uh, you know, the knobs and dials on. Uh, so for example, I want to scan a website. Uh, I want to probably change the duration. I might want to change the scan type. Uh, so OWASP has two types, uh, has a full and a base. And so with just using uh, a template, you can, you know, ch you can basically tell GitHub to do certain things based on if, if statements. Uh, we'll take a little look at uh, how that is actually done. But for the purpose of this, we have all of our inputs that we need. There's also a sec section for secrets. And so another important thing to note is that secrets reference, the secrets that are referenced are, the, are referenced in your own repository, not the remote repository. Uh, so when you're making a call to this, when you ever you're referencing the secrets, it's using the context that's local to where where you run this workflow, and so it doesn't really matter where you've um, uh, where you've where you've referenced anything. It, it, everything is the context is local, okay. And when you have all of your inputs, we can run this as is. Uh, I actually have this key, but if you didn't, you could set this to false, and you wouldn't have to. Set these values you could just erase them uh, so that's what it means when it says only required uh, if these values are true so if it's not true then you can just get rid of it um, okay so what we can do is we can actually just copy this and we can copy this to a file under dot github and workflows this is important so this is where all the workflows will be registered uh, and so I, that is the pipeline templates repo, but I'm going to do this under the the GitHub Actions caller repo, which is just a repo I have uh, I made uh, for the purpose of the demo. Uh, so again, workflows are under GitHub. I can make a folder called workflows, and I can make a new file called OWASP OWASP.yaml. I'll do dash scan. We'll be explicit. So. Just paste it. All we can save it. Um, what we'll do is I'll just add the changes and push them to the repo, and then we'll look at the pipeline. And so we'll push the changes. And we'll move over to our repository here. And we'll take a look. So we're now running this. And all of this stuff that's happening is is has been defined in the uh, in the pipeline templates workflow of this zap OWASP scan. So you know, we didn't have to define any, any of these tasks. They're already defined in the template. Just provide the inputs, run the pipeline. And it's a pretty quick process. After this, what we'll do is we'll look at, uh, so what this will do is it'll actually publish the results to GCP storage and po paste a link in the output here where it's a pre-signed URL that is available for I think 10 minutes. 
It'll also post the results in a branch as well. But the reason for the GCP uh, service account key is because it's actually accessing uh, uh, one, one of my projects and then publishing the results to a bucket. And then it will create that bucket if it doesn't exist. So I thought this was a good idea. This is all custom logic that we have implemented because I find it could be hard to uh, view the results um, right away because it just publishes the results local to the pipeline. So it's nice to have that publicly available at a, at a public, publicly accessible link. And so it's only running the base scan. That's an important thing to know. It's only doing base because we said base, right? I have both options in this pipeline, but it actually skips the full scan because the full scan only wants to, is only going to run if, uh, if you set this variable here to full. Uh, and so this is how you can kind of delineate. Instead of having two workflows, you can now have one workflow that does two things. Uh, so we have our URL here. So if I click this, we will uh, get our zap report. This is an HTML page at the GCP storage. So this is like a nice value add, I find. Uh, especially if you want to look at something quick. Okay, that's the uh, that's that. Uh, so obviously, I had to use a secret. So the secrets are defined in here in the settings. So when you're in your repo, you go to settings, you go to secrets, and this is where you define your repository secrets, and then those get used uh, when you reference this. Whenever when there, whenever secrets is prefixed, uh, it's looking right here for for any of those secrets to match. All right, so that's how you call a pipeline. Next thing we want to do is uh, just look at the logic and see um, the conditions, how the conditions are made, and then, um, and then yeah. So going back to the pipelines, let's open up uh, the OWASP workflow right over here. So you'll see the first thing that happens when you're when you have a pipeline to be reused, uh, there is a concept of when it's called. So a workflow call is something we just simulated. So workflow call being when it basically has this in it. That's when it triggers this. And then what it's going to do is it's going to reference all of these inputs, right? So all of these inputs are going to be checked for their types and whether or not uh, the required uh, attribute is matched. So if you didn't put the scan type and like just erased it and then tried to run the pipeline, you'll get a very specific error that says, nope, can't do that. This value is required. And so you get very detailed sort of feedback uh, to the user on the, uh, the values they are, they need to actually run these pipelines. Uh, so yeah, values can be not required. So as you can see here, I set all of those values for the GCP project and service count to be false. Meaning this Boolean value. So this Boolean value here can be true or false. And when it is false, uh, it won't run. And so I don't really want to require any of these other variables to be set if I'm going to make it optional. And so that's how you would do optional, uh, optional conditional checks uh, in, in, in a workflow. And so just very quickly to look at uh, how those conditionals are checked, we can go here. Uh, just using an if condition uh, with a uh, just calling the input. This is uh, basically checking a true or false. So it's doing true or false. And then um, we have another one here, like this one right here. So this says if inputs equals base, execute this. And then I have my zap full scan, which is doing something a little different. The logic to actually do a full scan is a little different. But again, if I have full scan as that variable here, then it will do this logic. And so that's how you can sort of develop these nice workflows where 
you can really keep it simple on the front end here while uh, providing much a lot of functionality on the back end. Like there's not very many, I don't think there's an OWASP scan uh, as detailed as this. Uh, this is probably the best one. It's the best one I've seen, so uh, uh, it's good stuff. Uh, and I think that covers most of the logic. Um, I don't know if there's... Let's do one more. Let's do... Uh, let's do a build. So again, what we do is we go yeah, copy, paste, go to our repo, create a workflow file under workflows. And the file name of a workflow doesn't matter. It's arbitrary. It checks the whole folder and then it imports based on name. And so the name is what you'll see in the, uh, the browser. And so I already have those values in my repo right here. But if you didn't, you'd add your registry username, registry password. Uh, and then here you can see that I'm referencing a folder called demo nginx. I just copied this from the pipelines templates right here. And so this just has Docker, a Docker file and uh, a website. All right. And so I, I'm good with this. Uh, good with the interview. You can change this. This could be Quay or whatever. But this is good. I'm going to save this and then commit. And if we go back to our repo and go under actions, we'll see that uh, now we have two uh, pipeline runs and this is because we have a trigger set in the on section to whenever I push a change. And also I have one here for workflow dispatch. This basically means I can go here and, and run it manually for each one. That's, that's what uh, workflow dispatch means. But uh, if we go to all workflows here and look at our Docker build, we can take a peek and see it's already done. Uh, just pushing a very simple website, pushes it to my Docker hub. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's everything that you need to know to get started. Uh, if you have any questions or you, wanted to, you want to uh, submit an issue, if you find a bug, feel free to open an issue here and we will get back to you.